But what we're going to look at today is what we're going to do in order to populate the report card. So this is from the portal that you'll find more information on the report card. In addition, there's uh, other information on the Data Connect website. The Data Connect website is where we put resources that support the use of Power Teacher, Power School, and Gradebook. So if I'm on the Data Connect website, which is linked to the portal, I can click on Power Teacher and Gradebook. And there's additional how-to resources. Again, these are for your benefit if you decided you wanted to try adding an assignment or attaching it to standards or how you would do uh, your grading or your scales. There's lots of information here, but these are things we'll be covering in subsequent Tech Tuesday sessions and we'll be addressing in documentation that we'll share with lead teachers and administration. So this is, if you want to take a look, you're welcome to, but our first goal uh, when we entered into Power Teacher to start the year was we are going to be able to take attendance and then at report card time we are going to enter our results. You would click here to launch your gradebook. I already have mine launched so I'll bring it up. So as we arrive at the first report card and you can see here in the pull down I'm going to choose which quarter I'm teaching in. So we're in our first quarter, and you would see it says here, quarter one in progress. And when I reach the time in October, end of October, I'm ready to enter my results. I may have been adding, and I'm going to just, my session timed out there. I may have been adding assignments, and if I had, they would display here. But if I haven't done that yet, that's not a problem because the gradebook isn't calculating the marks you're going to enter. I click on Final Grade tab. As a homeroom teacher for the report card, I'm going to enter the Learning Habits results. And there's more detailed information on the Learning Habits that are on the portal site in the document. But my, I would come in and here for independence, I can go and I'm going to assess as VG, G, S and N, I, or if that one had not been addressed in that reporting period, or I don't feel I can assess it at this time, I could enter an N, A. So I can enter a score for a student these are the subcategories that make up the main category. They're there for your use if you choose to use them. Uh, you may want to enter a score for perseveres or uses time well, um, but it is not necessary. It's just an added feature. But if I were to go in and choose to use those scores, it would auto-calculate to the main category. And then I still always have the right to come in and change it. So doing the subcategories is a choice, but it is not mandatory. So what I'm going to assess for each child is the four main categories. So I've done independence here, interactions, organization, and you can see the main categories are in a darker blue and that makes them stand out. So right there, I have completed the four learning habits for this student. If I do this, and I can do it through the pull down, I can also go to show score inspector. And if I do that, I do have the option of toggling across here, so switching. I can also use the arrows up above to toggle through the different learning habits. You can see I can move along like this. So if I didn't want to click over with my mouse, I can do that. I can also toggle down through the different students. So I can go up and down through the students. Both result in the indicators being entered. It's just a different way to do this. And this is also documented in the paper document on the portal. So I can just go in. So when I've done my students on the four categories, I will have completed learning habits. For K to five teachers, learning habits are always assessed 
by the homeroom teacher. For six to eight teachers, learning habits are assessed on the progress reports by the homeroom teacher and on the achievement reports by the subject teacher. And I'll show you how that looks a little different. Again, anytime I go to leave a screen, I'm going to be reminded, would you like to save? And so I, if I say no, then anything I entered here will not be saved. So if I wanted to save these results, I would click yes. And then I can move to the next grade. So I'm just going to show you how a middle school looks different. So I'm now in grade 7 mathematics. And in addition to the strands that the teacher will assess and the strands will follow, middle school teachers will always see the learning habits at the beginning. If it was a Q1 or a quarter one or progress report, the middle school teachers would just move past these and move on to assess the strands. If it is a quarter two report, then they would assess both the learning habits, just the main categories, and the strands. So that's just a slight difference for the six to eights. So that's learning habits, and they're located homeroom, for progress and for middle school we would ask six to eight that they are going to enter for the achievement reports they're also going to assess learning habits for the subjects and I'm now looking at entering results for English language arts grade two it's just an example but when I click on again when I'm ready at a reporting period I'm going to click on the final grades tab and I am going to, on a progress report, I'm going to enter a comment only if a student is progressing with difficulty. If a student is progressing or progressing well, entering a comment on the progress report would be optional. But if a student is experiencing difficulty, it would be good to enter information that would help the parents. And there's some suggestions there on commenting on the portal site. So I could click here to enter a comment. There will be a, a thousand character maximum. You can see here the maximum on my test environment is zero, but if it was set to a, a thousand, you would see a countdown of how many you have left. And if you exceed it, it will tell you you've exceeded. So you will have the option then to go back and edit and change, but the limit will be a thousand characters. When you've completed your comment, you could close and choose another student, or again, you can move through the students adding the next comment. So if I had a list of 15 students, I could just move down adding my comments and moving along. In addition, you can see I've successfully added a comment now. I will see the blue C when I've added a comment for a student. So if I've commented on part of my class and I'm going to come back and finish the others later, I can tell that the students that don't have the little blue C, I haven't added a comment yet. In addition to the comment, I'm going to add a result for the strands. So in this subject, English language arts, I have three strands that I'm assessing. For the progress reports, I'm going to use the progress indicators. And um, for the achievement, I'm going to use the one, two, three, four. If at this time I have not addressed that strand, I can enter the not applicable. So if I haven't taught it, I will enter. So I'm going to say progressing well, progressing, and progressing. The GCOs and SCOs are also listed there. They're just for your reference. If a teacher chose to create assignments and attach them, they would have the ability to do so, but that is in no way required for reporting purposes. So right now, if I had completed this student's learning habits and I had entered a comment, if the student, and again, this student with progressing well and progressing, I would not necessarily have to add a comment. 
I would have completed the information required for that student for learning habits in English language arts. You will see here on the side a folder for all the subjects that you teach the student and currently you would see folders for the other subjects your homeroom student is in. When I see a little blue bar on the book, I can tell that this is a course where there is a co-teacher and a lead teacher. So I'm only going to enter the results for the students that I teach in the subjects that I teach. So if I went to mathematics, I would then repeat the process again with the math strands. In here, for example, with middle school, I, on the first report, I go past the learning habits. I would only then enter the results for the strands with the progressing scale. Again, the option is there to use show inspector and that too would allow me to move through the strands if I prefer doing it that way and when I complete a student down through the next student. So again it's just a different navigation but it gives us an option to do that. I can use the pull down or I can work my way through the achievement indicators with the arrows. Just two different ways to do it. So that would give me the indicators. When I have entered all the learning habits, I've entered the achievement indicators or progress indicators for the subjects I teach the students, I would then go and say grades complete. And this is an indicator to the office or administration that I as a teacher have entered all my grades and they're complete for Q1. At the level of administration, they can run a report and they can then say how many teachers have completed their grades. And when they know they have all the grades incomplete, then uh, they would be able then to print the report card. When I indicate my grades are complete, that places the grades from my teacher gradebook in a table in Power School. From Power School, and that's the administrative side, they will be able to pull that information to build the report card. So the report card is built after all the grades are final. There are samples of the report card uh, on the portal site in there, they will give you a pretty good example of what the report card will look like. We are still working with the Pearson programmers, so there will definitely be um, there will definitely be the subjects you teach. There will definitely be a column that will show the indicators. There will be an area on the progress reports, a large box area for commenting, shared commenting by the multiple teachers, and single comment boxes on the achievement. What we don't know yet, and we should know by the end of next week, and what we will be covering on the October 9th PD session, is the actual look and feel of the report card. And we'll have that available there, but it will really just be, is it is it portrait, is it landscape, and the size of the boxes. Also, while you're on Power Teacher, included in the report card this time is a PLP indicator. So when you log into Power Teacher, you'll see this large icon here. And if a student has a PLP, I can click on their name and I can add either individualized or I can add modified. So that indicator will also be pulled and become part of the report card. The individualized or modified will be added at the level of the course, not at the level of the strand. But it is certainly possible to attach an individualized on a student that I teach English language arts, but maybe those same modifications or individualizations are not required in music or physical education or another subject. So for each indicator, we would attach that there. 
There are diagrams in the paper docu document on the portal that walk through those steps. So I'm going to stop there. We've got two minutes and we'd certainly welcome questions. And, um, and if it takes beyond the 20 minutes, I would be happy to stay on. Again, when we have the PD on uh, October 9th, and there will be additional sessions leading up to actually generating the report cards before the end of October, when we have the actual report cards ready for us, uh, we'll go step by step through doing this, so there'll be an opportunity to practice. And again, until you click that box that says grades are final, you can keep changing them and adjusting them, so there's no danger in going in and clicking these. The strands for all subject areas should be available to K-8 teachers by early next week. Well, it doesn't look like anyone has any questions, Mary Jo, at this time. But um, for those that want to rewatch this presentation, it, it will be posted on the website tomorrow. So look for that email. And I'd like to thank, again, Mary Jo for her time. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, and have a nice day, everyone.